Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. Hi. Hey. Hey. This is a blog that I wrote four years ago, but we've never actually brought it back on the podcast. And I decided to bring it back because you keep talking about it. Like every once in a while, you'll be like, oh, go back to that episode. And I'm like, no, no it's not an episode. So I'm bringing oh. it back so that well, now, now it legitimize is legitimize you. <laughs> Which one is this? That uh, I refer to all the time. <laughs> the jackhammer versus hummingbird. That hasn't been a podcast episode? You, okay, you've said that so many times now. I just can't believe it's still not. Well, we've I guess talked I... about it multiple times. We've talked about it in a couple different episodes, which I will link to at the end. It's featured heavily, but it's never actually been brought back. So It's about time. Yeah, so I did not... <laughs> I explained this in the episode, but this is not like a uh, theory I came up with. This is just one of my very favorite Liz Gilbert Course. things. Of course. <laughs> Liz Gilbert, our queen. <laughs> um, so that's that. I'm not even going to get into it because it's just going to explain itself once I read it. So. Yeah. And it's, we, this needs to be a podcast episode. So I'm glad. Here it is. I'm glad you brought it back. Let's hear it. Are you a hummingbird or a jackhammer? Have you ever met someone who's always known what they wanted to do? Like they were five years old and sure, they'd be a writer or a nurse or an engineer, went and did exactly that and are still doing it to this day? You probably have. And while those people didn't set out to make the rest of us feel bad, it sort of happens inadvertently, doesn't it? Liz Gilbert, the author of Eat, Pray, Love, and Big Magic, calls these people jackhammers. As in, they drill down with mega focus on one thing that they're really passionate about, and they hammer away at it forever. She's a self-admitted jackhammer herself when it comes to being a writer. She gave a talk a few years ago, which is definitely worth a listen, and I will link to it in the show notes, about how she mistakenly assumed that everyone was like this. Not only did she realize that she was dead wrong, but she had no idea how badly non-jackhammers often feel about themselves. There are a whole lot of us who think there must be something wrong if we don't have an all-consuming passion that we're mega-focused on for our entire lives. We feel like there's something they, the jackhammers, understand that we haven't figured out yet. And we can spend years, if not decades, feeling frustrated and hopeless about our search for an all-consuming passion, but never finding it. But as it turns out, jackhammers are actually really rare. Liz concluded, and I totally agree, that maybe 5% of the population fits the jackhammer bill. The rest of us? We're something else entirely, and it's nothing to feel dejected about. In fact, it's arguably even more fascinating. We're all a bunch of hummingbirds. Before you get annoyed at the frilliness and girliness of being called a hummingbird, just chill out for a second and let me explain. Hummingbirds move around a lot. They flit from place to place. They don't settle into anything for too long. Wherever they find themselves at the time, they're absorbed in that fully until they move on to the next thing. But it's hard to accept a life like this at first. Most of us are attracted to the idea of being a jackhammer because it feels refreshingly simple. Take my client Sophie, for example. All she's wanted is to just figure out the one thing she's passionate about so she can focus on that forever and stop having to think and worry about what she's going to do next. And I'll admit, Doing one thing with mega intensity forever would remove most of the thought and angst we feel about figuring out what's next. But Sophie isn't a jackhammer. She's a hummingbird. She feels the inclination to evolve often and doesn't actually want to commit to one thing forever. So I asked her, what if it was okay to just do something you're interested in for now instead of forever? That made her pause because she'd felt up until now that unless she committed to something forever, she was doing this whole passion thing wrong. She admitted that she was definitely attracted to the idea of for now instead of forever, but it was scary. She had a lot of concerns, like, 
What if people think you're a jumbled hot mess with no sense of direction? Or what if a hummingbird's resume doesn't look as logical as a jackhammer's and no one wants to hire you? Or what if you flit around so much that you can't even call what you're doing a career at all? Here's how I answered that. Being a hummingbird makes you infinitely fascinating. My grandma was a hummingbird. This lady was not your typical grandma either. She took belly dancing classes in middle age, and when she was in her 50s, she went back to school and got her master's in psychology. She could repair car engines, and she traveled around the world solo when she was in her 70s. She was a badass woman and endlessly interesting because of all the things she'd done and seen in her life. I made a new hummingbird friend recently, too. This woman's in her mid-30s but looks a decade younger. Hummingbirds age well, too, it would seem. She's one of those people you could hang out with every day and never stop learning something new about her. She's moved to a new city every other year since she graduated college. She has a degree in physics, but she's also studied philosophy at the PhD level. She's taught college, she's worked in straight-laced corporate environments, she does competitive archery, and she also owns her own web development firm with 10 team members under her and doesn't even have a degree in web development. Oh, and another one of my favorite authors, Diana Gabaldon, is a total hummingbird. Diana is the author of the Outlander series, but she didn't even start writing those books until she was in her 40s. Before that, she got degrees in ecology and biology and zoology. She taught university, wrote computer programs for avian researchers, which is a really niche interest, edited a software magazine, and wrote Disney comic strips. And then she wrote a number one New York Times bestselling book series that got turned into a Golden Globe-nominated TV show, all because she was curious about whether she could write a novel. It turns out the answer was, yeah. Yeah. Have I convinced you yet? Hummingbirds are really cool people. They don't just understand one thing, they understand almost everything. They dedicate their lives to just following what they're curious about at the time and trusting that it will take them somewhere interesting and worthwhile. They may not have a logical resume or career trajectory, but they don't really care because they're too busy doing what interests them. And honestly, no one else cares either. Most people are too intrigued by hummingbirds to judge them for not being jackhammers. Whether or not I've convinced you, I was able to convince Sophie. Sophie's well on her way to becoming a very well-rounded hummingbird. Right now, she's getting a higher degree in philanthropy, but she's thinking about simultaneously becoming a financial advisor. Why? Because she's really curious. She thinks it could be fascinating to help people through financial planning. She's done the research and her interest is piqued. She's made peace with the old idea that she has to do one thing forever. She's actually excited about just pursuing what intrigues her for now. And if she finds out she's wrong about her next step, I'll let her explain in her own words. If I'm wrong, then I'm okay with that. I'll search and find what's right, and I'm strangely okay with that feeling. I was terrified of being wrong, but after our talks, I just don't see it as that big of a deal anymore. I want a lived life, not a planned life. And if you are a jackhammer, that's okay too. There's nothing wrong with being a jackhammer. If that's genuinely who you are, like Liz Gilbert, who's made a great life being a jackhammer, then keep doing you. We can all be alluring and fascinating and inspiring in our own way. But don't fear being a hummingbird. Release the pressure to commit to one thing forever. Just commit to what piques your curiosity now. If you can follow your curiosity over and over again, you'll always feel passionate and inspired, regardless of what you're doing. And you'll probably be the most interesting person in the room every time. So are you a hummingbird or a jackhammer? Come and share with me in the comments. So not to criticize Liz Gilbert. I would never. Never. But if I were to, like, offer an edit to this idea, I wish she had said hummingbirds versus woodpeckers. <laughs> because yeah. a woodpecker is kind of like a the better jackhammer analogy. of birds. Yeah, it that has, you know, been a little bit more s- synonymous. I, I don't mean, know. It would have been sticking with the metaphor. Yeah, it, right. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So you could also, if you like woodpeckers better, go with that. <laughs> Woodpecker. <laughs> well, they do. They really like drill away on one thing very incessantly. And they come back to that same place over and over again. You know, they're not flitting around. They are getting down to business. <laughs> and so I, I just feel like woodpeckers and hummingbirds actually would make more sense. Yeah. And I'm they both surprised. have long bills, you know what I mean? There's like there's there's like more details to this analogy that makes sense. I'm honestly surprised she didn't think of that. I know, because she's a writer and a much better one than me. Yeah. But I've had years to sit around thinking about this <laughs> now, and she didn't, so, you she's know. She probably thought about it after the fact. She may have, but I feel like she would have just edited herself at some point. Maybe. I think she just moves on with her life, though, and, you know, sure. like a true hummingbird, she doesn't flip that, you know? <laughs> no, she's just going on. Okay, so I wanted to mention the episodes where... 
we kind of originally got into this. So the first one is a side chat from June 2018 called How to Figure Out What to Do With Your Life. It's one of our most popular episodes, and we talk about this principle, among other things, in that episode. Of course, we have to link back to our book club episode about Big Magic by Liz Gilbert. Yeah. Because, you know, this is her whole theory. We want to give props where props are due. And that was from June 2018. I don't know if that's in the book or not, but... I don't know that it is. But the I really whole book remember, is but... about following your curiosity and it's about living a creative life and getting over fear um, of making things. And yep. so it's relevant. Um, and then a couple just interviews with normal people that I feel were true to the theme of The Hummingbird... <laughs> kind of life were finding a dream job after years of searching with Tianka Shepard from September 2018. And then treating life like a magical scavenger hunt with Francisca Hernandez from November 2018. I love that one. That's a really good one about following your intuition and just yeah. letting life go where it's going to take you and being mm -hmm. a hummingbird. And then getting what you want and then losing it with um, Sarah Griffin from June 2019. We talk about we, she wouldn't, she, I don't think she was, maybe she mentioned being a hummingbird, but she definitely was alluding to it in that episode a lot, even if she never said it. So if you want to see that list, because you didn't remember anything we just said, you can go to the show notes and I've listed all of those there. Oh, and I've also linked in the links section to the original Super Soul talk that Liz gave called The Flight of the Hummingbird, which is where you she should first watch talked that. about this. It's really good. Yeah. So... That's that. All and right. we will be back on Friday with a dear Crachel. Yep. I'm kind of, I mean, I remember all of the questions and I'm like trying to. Oh. There was one, at the beginning, we had a little bit, bit of a disagreement, which we usually don't. But I think by the but end, not like we, an angry disagreement, no. which we have had plenty of, but we'll probably not have on the podcast just like to save face. <laughs> Um, but just know Unless it does something happen. goes very awry. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's kind of hard when you're editing. Mm -hmm. No one ever has to know the worst things that you say. Though I leave <laughs> a lot of my stuff in. <laughs> we don't edit that much, really. Um, but the episode is about, what did I decide to call it? Something like... Um, you just don't care enough. Or, like, what, just, I want to stop pretending like I care. Yeah, I just, I'm done pretending like I care. So if you like the idea of that, Come back on Friday and we'll talk about pretending to give a shit. All right. Bye. Bye.